Now I'm going to start working on the short block here on the, on the crankcase. So I've already got the recoil off, so 13 millimeter bolts there. These have some Loctite on them, so if you're taking them out by hand, they're going to be a little bit tough. I used a, the small impact on those, those three there. Then your the, what's left of the recoil comes off. <clears throat> Same thing with this one. This bigger nut, uh, there's a washer, lock washer underneath it, and it also has Loctite on it. So you might have to heat it up a little bit if you want. Anyway, that I used an inch and three sixteenths. I don't have the proper metric socket for that. I only have up to 27 mil. It's probably like a 32 or something. But a three a inch and three sixteenths worked on that. Now what I'm going to do is just take this <clears throat> basic puller, harmonic balancer puller that I've had for years. And I'm going to be putting that on and pulling off the, uh, the flywheel now. I've got to get the stator out of there. I want to get this case split. I'm behind schedule. I didn't get anything done on the weekend and I was hoping to. Anyways, you're not here to watch, listen to me talk, so I'll get that puller on there and we'll get that flywheel off right now. Ooh, that is tight. Second attempt. See if we can get her. All right. There she blows. Okay, good stuff. All right. I just get my earplugs out here. So just heated it up. Just be careful when you heat it up that that you're not getting anything inside the stator here hot that you don't want getting overheated so I don't know stator doesn't look like it's shorted or anything I don't know that black goo is there but I'll have to check that out so I'm gonna get that stator out of there next and then probably start taking the bolts out of the, the case there is I'll have to fish my wiring harness back through when I get the stator out anyway I'll show you how that's done too okay I just about got the stator out I cracked all these now I'm just Spinning them out with the impact, they've all got this Loctite on them too, so they're going to come out a little tougher. See this grommet is split so you can take that out and get your harness out. Okay, so it's in there pretty good. Not entirely sure. Um, okay, it looks like I've got to take a pickup coil off. to get it out. I'm not going to pull too hard on that. Maybe it's just the magnets holding it in. I'm not too sure. Find out. Okay, so I took this flywheel housing off. Just this sensor right here has got some glue on it that's glued into right into that area. It's goes on there like that. So you got uh, your torque screws holding this flywheel Hosing on, pop that off, but it's going to stick here. It's got a bunch of silicone in there. So I just was able to get in there with a the utility knife, my Olfi, and, <clears throat> and I just cut that off. Just trimmed that off a little bit. So when it goes back together, I'm going to have to reapply. I'm going to put some more glue on here. Just be careful because you can see how, sorry, shining in the right spot, not pointing in the right direction here. Uh, you can see there's exposed wires there. Right, see? So, anyway, I'll have to put some new glue on that. It's also glued back here behind the stator. So, you can just carefully you can get in there and pry in behind. There's a rubber strip here, I'll show you. And just work it, you know, very gently. You don't want to break a wire or short your stator out or anything. And you can see there how there's kind of a rubber mat that's glued onto the stator. And that was stuck to here. So you can kind of get a screwdriver in there and just kind of work at it. Don't get too crazy. And then the harness should fit through there. Now that the grommet's out. There's no doubt that this is a lot easier to do with the engine out of frame. Okay, so I'm going to have to take the take this pickup coil off. I found that, I don't know what that is, T50 or something, but 
Still plug wrench works, chainsaw wrench. Anyway, let's get that one out of there. Different lengths torques for this. Okay, looks like it's still glued in there, so just work that off gently. Stator is free. It doesn't look like it got too hot or anything. I don't see any signs of it shorting out anywhere. So I don't think there's any low voltage problems with this sled, so I think that'll be just fine. And uh, zip tie there. Okay, so that's good. Now I can carry on with taking out my uh, bolts. So I might just leave the water pump on for the moment if I can get everything apart. Next I'm going to have to take this bed plate out. It looks like I can, you know, these top mounts are, are on the top of the block so it looks like I can start splitting the case now. I don't want to start taking too much stuff off because I'm going to have to take this home on my work at my workshop now. Oh, there's some antifreeze in there laying around. Just came out. Uh, what I did read is that the coolant passages down here sometimes have some some flash in them. These ones don't look too bad. Those holes down there going to the water pump housing. So that's something you want to check while you have it apart. Uh, yeah, these ones look okay, but when I split the block, I'll be checking all that again, and of course I'll be filming that. Uh, could clean. Looks like it could clean some of these ports up if you can get in there. There's a bit of flash here and there that could be cleaned off because I want to try and get this thing running a little cooler if it's all possible. Okay, got all my bolts out. You've got, uh, let's see, I'll tell you what sizes these are here. Got four hex bolts at the bottom here, socket screws. If I can find my, I think there was six millimeter on these ones. Here it is, here. A bit. Five. Five mil for these ones. Then you've got some... T30 Torx, there's four of those up here, I took those out first, took these out next, then you want to do reverse pattern from the outside in, and take your, these are, oh, I'm going to have to clean that up, these are 11 millimeter, don't ask me why they're not 10 or 12, I mean that's just the way they did it, and then I pried this, just gently pry on a couple surfaces here, here you can pry a little bit, tap it with your hand, or your screwdriver handle if you need to, and you can pop this bed plate off, it's on dowels, so that's why it's a little bit tight. Okay, I think the gasket's just holding it there. There we go. So I can just leave all my bolts in that for the time being so I know where they all go. I'll put that rusty one back in, that's good. Alright, so that's what you got bottom of the case, so I guess that's just a bed plate to help hold the cases together. But as far as I can tell, we're ready to come apart. This case should split. Um, once I get a couple more bolts on, it's got another T30 Torx in here. I'm gonna have to get out. Let's see if I can get it with a wobble extension here. Hmm, I don't know if that's, that's not gonna do it. Okay, I gotta go get a. I think it looks like those are on a 10 millimeter hex and or. Uh, T30 tore up. I can get a torx in there. So I can get it out. Okay, there we go. 
So I found that a, a steel chainsaw wrench will also work and I just happen to have one handy on the bench here so that's why I'm using that to get these ones out. Because it just happened to be here. To get them cracked sometimes you can get enough of a bite on them to get them out. Ideally, it'd be nice to have a nice long bit. I don't have one on, with the torque, so. Looks like a bit of corrosion on those, or maybe some Loctite. So I'm gonna take note of where all these go for reassembly, obviously. On this side, I've got my bearing retainer, these four torques taken out. So it looks like it's ready to split. Let's find out. Come on now. It's going to hold together because there's some gas friction there, of course. Just double check and make sure everything's out. Okay. Missed one right there. Last thing you want to do is start forcing stuff. I'm gonna see what's holding. I got this apart. Looks like injector oil's leaking out. It was just, I just had to kind of pry a little bit on, uh, there's a couple different spots that you can get a screwdriver in that aren't mating surfaces. Allowed to pry on without wrecking anything. Uh, so it was just gasket glue holding these cases together. Okay, you can see it's separated. Just being a little bit stubborn. The dowels are probably holding it now, so just want to be real gentle where you careful where you pry. And uh, nothing serious is holding it. That water pump cavity looks like it stays right full of uh, oil. I'll show you that. I was curious to see, okay, so I don't know what this brown grease is, but I've seen that before. This is on the mag side of the crank, and I've seen that on the forums, guys taking pictures of this. That's not isoflex grease. At least I don't think it is. I don't think isoflex turns brown like that. Like this is still transparent. So somebody possibly greased that with a different type of grease, which I don't think matters. I don't think Isoflex is absolutely necessary. I know a lot of guys just say it's worth the money, but anyway. So you can see all the oil in there. The cavity's right full, like there's an inch and a half deep of oil in there. So on reassembly, we'll take note of that. That's to leave the water pump drive gear, I'm guessing. Here's my, this seal's brand new, I've just re-greased that one, uh, unfortunately it was a waste, but it's done now. Okay, and there's the crankshaft, this crank was in pretty good shape, but uh, it 
this bearing is loose on the shaft like I showed you in the first video. So it's time to time to replace it. I'm not going to take a chance on it. I had to do the top end anyways. So that's where we are. So anyways, I'm glad that I got this cracked open and I'm ready to put in the new crank. Rebuilt crank. I just had to take a dead blow hammer and tap up on it a little bit. Of course you want to be gentle while you're doing that, but it's just the friction from the, the lock rings. Like uh, on the bearings here. That's all that is that's holding in the, the crankcase here. There's a little bit of friction there. And, you know, these seals and stuff like that. So you just got to tap it out, be careful with it. I don't see any damage in the crankshaft. Like, these are a bit dirty, the, the bearing surfaces here where the bearings go in. But I don't see any pitting. I don't see where, it doesn't look like any of them were turning inside the case. So as far as I can tell, the cases are in good shape. This crankshaft actually looks like it's in really good shape. Like, there's no play in in the rod bearings. This mag side bearing looks good. Again, I don't know if somebody had greased this and they, I don't know what kind of grease they used. This stuff looks like it's a dark brown. It doesn't look like, it doesn't look like rust mixed with isoflex white grease. This looks, this is a, a clean, like there's no moisture in this grease. This is the color that it was, whatever that is, dark brown, almost black. And you can see that in there. So maybe somebody greased it with a different type of grease. I think that's probably fine. Like I was mentioning, I don't know how appropriate Isoflex is. Like I know the guys have a good point when they say just use, just spend the extra money and be safe and use the Skidoo recommended product. That makes sense to me too. Uh, either way, it's a good argument. Now this is the one that I had re-greased and this is the reason why I'm changing this crankshaft is because these should these should, shouldn't be able to come off by hand, these bearings. And look at the inside of that. So I did push Isoflex in there the best I could, but uh, you can see the, there's maybe some of the rust, yeah, the rust came maybe from this inside race here. The, you know, maybe it wasn't actually the ball bearing surfaces that were rusty, but when Isoflex turns that color, it's because there's moisture has gotten in there and rusted it. And it's also, especially if there's a little bit of corrosion, which you can see a little bit of rust, that shouldn't be that loose of a fit. So that's why I'm doing this. Maybe I could have put some, bought two PTO bearings and put uh, sleeve retaining compound on here, Loctite sleeve retaining compound, and maybe I would have, this crank could have went another 4,000 kilometers, I don't know. But for the price of a Reman crank, I would have had to go this far to replace these bearings anyway. You have to split the case because they've got locating pins, you can't slide them out. So I might as well just spend the money and have a rebuilt crankshaft. It does come with a warranty even if I install it myself. So you get the point. And I don't have to worry about it if we get way back in the back country. I don't have to worry about a crank case failure uh, or a bearing failure and then a heli lift out, which is going to be just about probably the same amount as a crankshaft anyways. Uh, this inside bearing has play in it. You can probably, see, maybe you can see that. That's loose. And look at the... Look at the grease in there. Nasty. Yeah, so that bearing's loose. Alright, so I think I made the right decision by doing this. I'm sure you guys all agree. Uh, it's, uh, it's unfortunate that this crankshaft, because it looks like it was in good shape. I was going to check the run out, but I'm just, I'm kind of in a hurry. Uh, I just wanted to check run out out of curiosity to see if, if it had a bit of a wobble to it. Um, at this point, I don't really... You know, I, I was curious about it, but I don't really care. I'm replacing it anyway, and I'm just, I'm kind of in a hurry. I want to do some more riding this year, and I'm going to have to break this engine in when I, when I get it going. So, uh, sorry about that, but I'm not going to check the run out on this crank. But uh, as far as I can tell, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. If I, maybe, maybe I'll put it on, if I get some time tomorrow, maybe I'll put it on some, I'll, I'll rig up some blocks of some sort that I can put it on in here, and I'll, I'll bring the dial indicator and take a look at it. So, the other thing that I'm going to do here is dump that oil out of there. Is I will be uh, bringing the mono block back down here because this is where all my air tools are, anyways, most of them. And I'm just going to polish up the ports here, so the transfer ports. This this isn't very rough. These castings are done quite nicely. There's no flash or anything. But I'm not going to remove material. I'm not going to change the shape of this. But I am going to gasket match it and make sure because I did. I did polish up the cylinders and take some casting out, this casting flash out. So if it doesn't match up, if there's a little bit of differences here, I'm just gonna 
I'm just going to uh, match that up so it's got a nice smooth transition from the cylinder. That's the only, th I'm, I'm pretty much done with porting, but that's the only thing I'm going to do. I think I could gain a little bit by polishing this up. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. I don't think I'm going to do any damage though. You guys have probably watched the videos on two-stroke porting and guys say, be careful, you can make an engine peaky, you can lose power. That's, that's all true, but I don't think that you can do anything, I don't think you're, you're going to do any damage by just just making these especially on a, a direct injected engine making these like polished up smooth all right so that's where i'm at tonight uh you know i kind of wanted to have be going back together right by now but uh whatever i'm running behind schedule that's life uh i'm gonna it won't take long to get this back together i'm just gonna check the run out on the new crank and because i've read different things about the, the rebuild the person that were the company that rebuilt it and some guys say that the early ones were had a little bit too much run out and you got to make sure to trim up i'm just going to make i'm just going to check it to make sure before i put it back together and uh, then you know i'm going to clean up that flywheel the rust off off of that because that's pretty rusty and then i'm going to put a little bit of fluid film on there and wipe it off and then we're going back together so uh, i'm looking forward to getting back on the snow here